Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the workshop, Future of Work and Skills for Emerging Markets. Um, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Um, and for those of you who are traveling, a very warm welcome to Boston and to MIT. My name is Ying Gao. I'm policy manager at the Abdul Latif Jamil Poverty Action Lab, or JPAL. And on behalf of all organizers, I'm so thrilled and grateful that you've decided to join our conversation this morning and today. Now we have a full day ahead, and before we dive into our keynote dialogue, I'd like to invite three speakers to welcome you more formally and set out the priorities for the day. So they are David Atkin, Professor of Economics at MIT, Jin Kai, Associate Professor at University of Maryland, Jing and David are co-chairs of J-PAL firm sector, and Ashta Advalu, who is co-founder of the Good Business Lab. Ashta is also professor of economics at the University of California, San Diego, where he is serving as the inaugural director of the 21st Century India Center. Now we will begin with David. So David, the floor is yours. Great, so thank you, uh, uh, just echoing Jing's words, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We're super excited uh, uh, to have a, a great uh, slate of uh, speakers and activities. Um, so let me kind of give just a kind of broad overview uh, of uh, what we'll be talking about as well as to introduce uh, J-PAL a little bit more uh, formally. Uh, so uh, as uh, uh, Ying mentioned, I'm David Atkin, I'm uh, uh, one of the two uh, co-sector chairs um, uh, at J-PAL. Uh, and uh, Jing will also be uh, talking shortly. Okay, so let me give a little bit of background uh, on why we're here today. So uh, despite substantial progress in recent decades, uh, still uh, about uh, half the world's population live on less than $7 per day. Uh, and so there's still much work uh, to be done in alleviating poverty. And that's where uh, kind of J-PAL's mission comes in. And J-PAL's goal is to, to use a scientific approach uh, in order to uh, both innovate, to test, and to scale up solutions uh, uh, to global poverty. And it does that uh, using uh, kind of three pillars. The first pillar uh, is research. And this is where uh, uh, J-PAL uh, uh, and J-PAL researchers uh, identify unsolved problems, uh, fund research, uh, uh, and conduct studies in order to come up with innovative new solutions to those problems, uh, and then uh, carry out uh, randomized control trials to assess uh, 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 the uh, uh, success of those policy solutions. So the second pillar uh, is trying to take those policies, uh, uh, those kind of ideas for poverty alleviation uh, into the field to action, uh, uh, to actually uh, informing practice. And we do that through uh, having very strong partnerships with uh, uh, government organizations, with NGOs, uh, and uh, as we're going to be talking about today, uh, uh, with uh, uh, firms uh, in order to try and uh, 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 catalyze adoption uh, of uh, uh, these kind of innovations uh, uh, coming out of the research. Okay, and the third pillar uh, is uh, capacity building, education and training uh, within uh, uh, implementing organizations in order to allow them uh, to implement these policies, uh, to scale them up, to evaluate them as they go along, uh, to ensure they have as much impact uh, as possible. Okay, so how does it do this? Well, kind of center, central to that uh, 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 kind of three pillar approach uh, is the research, uh, and that's done uh, by a network of researchers across the world, uh, and many different institutions, uh, 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 several of which are represented uh, here today. Uh, and that's allowed us uh, uh, to do an enormous uh, amount of uh, uh, um, uh, work uh, across the globe. So far, there's been uh, more than 1,500 uh, completed randomized control trials uh, uh, across 95 uh, uh, countries. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, J-PAL's 20th year. We'll be celebrating the anniversary next week, uh, uh, and uh, this is an enormous achievement. Uh, in terms of kind of the impact, uh, uh, we can't just judge it based on uh, uh, how many trials we've done, uh, 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 but on kind of moving the needle uh, in terms of poverty alleviation, and uh, uh, perhaps there's kind of no greater example uh, of uh, J-PAL's success than uh, Esther, who'll be here uh, in a couple of minutes to uh, 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 speak with us. Uh, being awarded the Nobel Prize exactly for this experimental approach uh, to alleviating uh, our global poverty. Okay, so what are we going to be talking about today? So 
I like to think of this uh, 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 as kind of the next frontier for J-PAL. Uh, much of J-PAL's work up to now has been working with governments and non-governmental organizations on topics such as education, on health, uh, on, 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 on anti-poverty programs, on governance, etc. And I think of the kind of next frontier as working uh, uh, with the private sector on inclusive private sector growth uh, and worker well-being. Why do I think uh, uh, this is key and important? Well, I think the answer to that's pretty obvious, which is the private sector is the main employer uh, 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 for people in emerging markets. It's also going to be the main driver of job creation. Uh, and if we also want to turn sort of uh, low-quality jobs into high-quality jobs, if we want to create good jobs in these settings, uh, then uh, it's private sector actors who are really going to be central in that transformation. And so, you know, given that these are two of the central challenges of our age, job creation and trying to uh, 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 improve the quality of jobs, uh, it's no surprise that we, we should be thinking uh, of forming partnerships uh, 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 with firms and private sector actors and organizations that interface with them uh, in order to kind of achieve uh, uh, these goals. And, you know, one thing we're going to be echoing a lot today in a bunch of the discussions uh, is that achieving this uh, is... Uh, 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 we have a kind of a, a unique opportunity here in the sense that uh, in many of these cases, society's objectives and the firm's objectives are actually very well aligned. That's certainly true in terms of job creation in the developing world. And we're increasingly finding it's true also in terms of creating good quality jobs. That when you create good quality jobs, workers are more productive uh, and you can achieve both profitability and productivity alongside social impact uh, and not despite it. Uh, and so uh, we're incredibly uh, enthusiastic about uh, 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 kind of partnerships uh, and, and agenda going forward uh, in order to kind of accelerate these processes uh, 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 through uh, 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 research, uh, 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 through uh, uh, um, trying to translate that research into action, uh, through advocacy, et cetera. Uh, and here, kind of the standard approaches of J-PAL are, uh, we think, very well suited to many of these challenges. So currently, a lot of uh, uh, the private sector, or some of the private sector, does do uh, uh, randomized control trials under the guise of A-B testing. But that's typically done just in marketing contexts or in user interface design, for example, uh, 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 in uh, the software industry. And we think that these tools are, 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 can be just as powerful when thinking about some of these kind of key challenges uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, worker welfare, uh, uh, job creation, sustainability, et cetera. Uh, and, you know, this is kind of, again, uh, uh, kind of through three steps. Uh, the first benefit is it's going to inform us about what works, uh, uh, what to implement, uh, what to invest in, what to scale up, et cetera. Uh, second, uh, and this is kind of uh, um, uh, not unique uh, uh, to the private sector, but also true in government, is that, you know, a, a strong, rigorous piece of evidence uh, obtained through a randomized control trial uh, uh, or similar uh, is able to allow advocates within firms or within organizations uh, to make uh, the internal business case uh, for implementing this policy. And often this is kind of key uh, in, t in going from a, a, a kind of a, 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 an idea, a potential solution to actually uh, impact. And then third, kind of in terms of uh, industry or sectoral wide, uh, understanding these drivers of impact allows uh, 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 for kind of industry leadership by, the, by kind of pioneer firms who are excited in pushing these things forward and kind of shaping the agenda uh, uh, for a more sustainable world. Okay, so we'll talk about uh, a lot of uh, uh, topics today, but I just wanted, uh, uh, before handing over uh, 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 to Jing to get into some more details, to give a very, very brief overview of the kind of uh, 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 areas that we're going to be discussing today. Uh, so, you know, how can uh, the private sector drive social impact? Uh, so one thing we'll be talking about a lot is through uh, worker well-being and empowerment. I will talk about worker voice interventions, upskilling, and there's many other uh, 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 um, uh, uh, types of intervention that fit in there. We'll also be talking a lot about unlocking opportunities for women, whether that's allowing them to move up to management uh, positions or whether that's thinking about micro-entrepreneurs and uh, uh, allowing them to expand their businesses and create uh, employment. We'll also be talking about uh, supply chains and global value chains, and here we have both questions about kind of bringing local suppliers into those chains uh, and uh, uh, attempting to kind of improve outcomes uh, uh, through working with them to, say, uh, uh, be more sustainable or, or have better uh, 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 worker uh, 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 policies. 
Uh, and then kind of two topics which we're not going to have specific uh, uh, sessions dedicated to, but will uh, uh, feature, I, I think, uh, in our discussion somewhat uh, heavily, is, you know, we're facing a lot of technological challenges in the years ahead, uh, particularly related to AI, augmented reality, work from home, uh, et cetera, and thinking about preparing workforces uh, and entrepreneurs in the emerging uh, 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 economies uh, uh, for this change and allowing them to kind of leverage these tools uh, uh, to give them an advantage uh, rather than to kind of supplement uh, uh, what they're doing. And then finally, a topic which kind of uh, uh, really uh, undergirds everything uh, 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 which uh, uh, J-PAL's doing in certain ways now uh, is environmental sustainability. Uh, and uh, that'll certainly be a topic that will come up, thinking about how to help suppliers uh, uh, um, uh, uh, improve their sustainability uh, and direct effects uh, on firms as well. Okay, so I'll leave it at that, and I'll hand over uh, uh, to Jing, who'll talk a little bit more about a couple of specific projects that uh, J-PAL's been involved in, uh, where uh, uh, we've used some of these methods to uh, uh, move the needle on some of these areas. Thank you very much. Thank you, David, and thank you, everyone, for participating in the event today. So as David mentioned, private sector is not only the main engine for job and income creation, but also have the potential to generate many like important social impacts. And in the past decades, j researchers have been working with companies all over the world uh, to conduct research on this line. So next, let me uh, give you a quick look at some of our work. So for many manufacturing firms, a big problem facing them is the very big worker turnover rate. So our researchers have conducted uh, researches in both India and China, working together with big companies to design solutions to this problem. Specifically, we find that enabling worker voices could potentially reduce worker turnover. For example, in Arch and NS work with um, a big Indian uh, garment factory, they find that letting workers participate in a survey after a disappointing wage hike could reduce turnover by more than 20% several months later. And in my own work uh, in China, in which we partnered with a big automobile factory, we designed a new evaluation scheme with the company, which is to let workers participate in their manager's evaluation. And we find that this not only led to um, significant increases in team productivity, but also reduced annual worker turnover by more than 30%. So this impact is much bigger than some strategies they have tried before, such as like by paying more salaries or bonuses to workers. So those are good examples where researchers can stick together with business owners, discuss their questions, find a solution together, and also conduct evaluations on those um, solutions. So companies can not only um, improve worker well-being through uh, using like new uh, management practices in their own company, but also have the potential to affect more workers and uh, companies through the global supply chain. So for example, increased labor demand from abroad is likely to raise wages and pro workers into the formal sector. So while this might lead to the expansion of sectors with poor uh, working condition, but global companies may also help, uh, can be a force for change using uh, urging suppliers to improve working conditions. So one is example is a research um, by our affiliate Laura, who conducted um, research in um, Bangladesh. So she worked with an um, alliance of 29 multinational companies who were committed to enforce a local law which required worker uh, manager occupational safety and health um, committees. So together with those multinational companies, she did a randomization which is to enforce um, uh, uh, this committee program with half of the 84 suppliers. Um, and they find that inf this enforcement could increase suppliers' compliance with Bang Bangladesh labor law and also improved worker safety significantly. And global firms can also uh, uh, provide like generate positive externalities to their suppliers through technology and knowledge uh, transfers. So for example, um, Davis' work in Egypt find that providing 
uh, rock producers with export opportunities could potentially generate important gains in profit and also product um, quality. And another research in Costa Rica also shows that um, supplying to multinational companies they not only generate short-term impacts on sales, but also have a sustained impact on uh, their employment and the productivity. So what are the like, potentially important and interesting open questions where uh, researchers can collaborate with companies to find a solution? So those are areas that I'm mostly interested about, and I'm sure there will be more discussion uh, throughout the day. So firstly, regarding workplace dialogue, I think we still need to learn what are the best inform information gathering system and survey designs, and how to encourage workers to express their opinion, especially among the like, female uh, employees. And on supplier ownership, more research is needed on like, what are the most effective way to monitor supply chain and how to facilitate the learning among suppliers and how do aspects of the uh, contractor relationship affect suppliers uh, performance and social compliance. And with the development of like digital economy and AI, we also want to think about how can we leverage digital tools to engage workers? What kind of digital tools can be used to uh, select, monitor, and empower suppliers? And how do we use big data and AI tools to improve um, firm production and management? And lastly, regarding uh, improving market access and knowledge transfer, we want to learn more on like, what are the constraints in different contexts that prevent firms in developing countries from accessing demand, and how can we facilitate knowledge and technology transfers along the supply chain. Okay. And I look forward to further discussion with all of you um, uh, regarding those questions. All right, thank you. Well, I'll try to be brief. I know we're running a little bit late. Um, uh, thanks, uh, David and Jing, for uh, setting this up. I think uh, as uh, both the speakers just mentioned, I think there's a very com compelling argument that we're you know, I'm preaching to the choir here in this room, but hopefully we can all be evangelists um, in this movement to understand better the ways in which the private sector can be involved in the development process. And there's an unparalleled opportunity to be you know, part of that uh, movement uh, and, and affect the lives of hundreds of millions of workers around the world who are, you know, for the first time, moving into manufacturing and services jobs. And on the other hand, um, it's very challenging. And I think, you know, uh, as we know from the early days of working in government, I think j has made a lot of inroads in terms of influencing the way we think about government uh, uh, decision making and informing that decision making with evidence a similar type of revolution needs to take place in the private sector as well, um, because we can really affect the way that the private sector thinks about investing in its workforce, thinks about growth um, through structured and rigorous decision making um, that's informed by the best evidence possible. And so that's what I hope that we can kind of come away from this event in doing is to you know, forge collaboration amongst ourselves and also take this message back to your organizations and back to um, the real world and uh, help, you know, to catalyze some of these conversations and, and some of this uh, evidence generation. Um, so I just wanted to highlight, uh, you know, a Good Business Lab and the work that, uh, you know, we've been doing for uh, some time in this space. Um, Good Business Lab was, was uh, founded by myself and uh, Anant Naishadam and Anant Ahuja are both here, and I hope you get a chance to uh, meet them and speak with them. In particular, um, uh, Anant Ahuja um, you know, is an industry partner with us and, and, and uh, kind of highlights the ways in which um, industry and academia and the sort of uh, you know, multilateral organizations in the nonprofit sector can work together to, to generate this evidence. Um, you know, I think we, we follow a very similar process to what uh, Jing and David uh, outlined um, uh, that j you know, has followed in the government, 
um, working with private sector organizations to sort of listen to workers' needs, co-design interventions and co-create solutions for those needs, evaluate impacts rigorously, largely through the use of randomized control trials, uh, and then lead businesses to adopt those interventions uh, far and wide. So I think there's, there's you know, two parts to this. I think we're gonna be looking at some of the evidence that's been generated so far uh, on this front, but a lot more needs to be generated and a lot more needs to be understood in terms of how businesses can best invest in workers. But also there's a question of how do we achieve scale because as most of you in this room know, just having the evidence out there uh, is very uh, is great, but but then there's many steps that need to be taken to actually create adoption, convince businesses that this makes sense and that they should invest. And so I think there's a another role to be played for, uh, you know, scale in the private sector. I think one happy happy kind of uh, notion here is that often the private sector you know, is very rapidly uh, able to adopt interventions when they feel like uh, it can give uh, a firm a competitive edge. And so, you know, if these interventions are framed in the manner of increasing uh, returns or uh, productivity or pro profits for firms, um, that can generate very rapid adoption um, in some instances. So I think there's a lot of hope for the private sector to scale these interventions rapidly and affect a lot of people. Um, so I want to kind of uh, just uh, send the message out there that, that I think the creation and the scale of this evidence is really, really important. You all in the room already believe that, but now I think you know, taking that to, uh, to, to the rest of the private sector uh, and engaging is, is really important. Um, we work across four uh, areas of, of, of uh, interventions around unlocking female labor and increasing female labor force participation, uh, closing skill gaps within the firms, uh, improving the work environment, uh, and building holistic health, which includes physical as well as mental health. Um, you know, this is just some of the impact numbers. We'll get to some of these, uh, you know, in the panels, so I don't want to spend too much time here, but I think, you know, uh, through the private sector, you can actually very rapidly impact a great number of workers, and that's something that we're excited about the, the potential for. Um, all right, well, let me just uh, stop there, because I know we want to get to our uh, uh, keynote panel, and so I want to, you know, um, you know, thank everybody for coming, and uh, look forward to conversing with all of you in the in the course of the day. Thanks a lot. <laughs>